Hey Dave, do you want to do us a solid? Hello. <clears throat> I'm over here. Hi, and welcome to Millboard, where we will be investigating the lives of the humble yet mighty Paris intrutus Lividus, otherwise known as the common purple sea urchin. Commonly found inhabiting temperate coastal waters throughout the Mediterranean Sea and the Eastern Atlantic, it can reside at depths from just below the watermark down to 20 metres. Recent scientific studies have suggested that the lives of these fascinating creatures may be under threat from effects of rising sea temperatures and ocean acidification. It is predicted that this will cause both physical and chemical changes within the body of the common purple sea urchin to the detriment of the species. Climate change is having a great impact on the state of our oceans and changing the carbon chemistry in ways we do not yet fully understand. Ocean acidification is the ongoing decrease in pH due to increased atmospheric CO2 dissolving in surface waters. This is also increasing the water temperature, which is expected to be 2 degrees warmer by 2100. This will have unknown impacts on many marine organisms, especially those that need stable conditions to grow their skeleton and shells. Many of these, including our friend the purple sea urchin, make calcium carbonate structures, otherwise known as chalk, that struggle in acidic environments. Now, let's go and explain the chemistry. Carbon dioxide dissolves in the ocean and reacts with water to form carbonic acid creating bicarbonate, carbonate and hydrogen ions. All these ions pass into the calcifying spaces next to their shells. Sea urchins make high magnate calcite, which is highly soluble and makes ocean pH even more worrying for the species. Carbonate ions are essential for shell growth, but when there is excess hydrogen in seawater, these tend to bond to carbonate particles, reducing the ability for the sea urchin to grow at its optimal rate. Now, let's look more closely at our friend the sea urchin and see how this might have an effect on its physical structure and how we can observe the effects of ocean acidification. The skeleton of the sea urchin is called the chest and includes the body, spine and valve. It is made up of individual plates held together by ligaments. These include the interambulacral, ambulacral, ambital and apical plates that surround the chest. In order to determine the mechanical strength of sea urchin skeletons, the interambulacral plate is most commonly tested as it is the least complex and porous plate, giving a better indication of shell strength. I got a bit bored there, so thought I'd speed things up, <laughs> literally. Good examples of research on the effect of lower pH and higher temperatures have tested sea urchins both in the natural habitat and in the lab. Three types of mechanical tests are shown here, where scientists try to mimic the jaws of predatory fish and test the effects of bending and compressing on the plate. In the lab experiments, the urchins showed no response to long-term exposure of low pH and higher water temperatures, and the skeletal properties remained the same. This result was also reflected for the urchins exposed to naturally low pH and carbon dioxide seep sites. The sea urchins in tide pools show there is some level of variation in skeletal strength between pools with pH fluctuations. Those subjected to higher pH levels show higher fracture force, but reduced growth, possibly due to altering resource allocation to allow flexible plate. From these tests, the predicted ocean acidification and rising sea temperature should not greatly affect the adult life stage of the purple sea urchin. However, this is only a minute glimpse into the vast consequences of climate change within our magnificent and spectacular oceans, and sea urchins in particular. Yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me.